I bet they'd love to know how to fix it. And as he was saying, when they shake, they want to knock the tire loose. A smooth ride is a quick ride in any kind of drag racing machine, just a little rule of thumb. That's exactly right. You, you'll throw away about 10 to 15 hundredths of a second. But wrong there. And also, Bazelli was laying in the way because Boz Baby, who was in the far lane, remember this was earlier today in round number one, well, he had nothing to lose, so he maybe took a little bit of a gamble on the light. Actually, he just got away quicker than Noonan. Neither one of them had a particularly great start. But it was Bazelli in the far lane with a bit of a hole shot. A 6.55 a lap's time, beat a quicker 6.50. And that's possible because the clock doesn't start till the front wheels move out of those infrared beams. So Bazelli showed a little smoke out of the motor now as he moves in to face off with Bill Barney. Barney, the number one qualifier from Citrus Heights, California. His area's motor rent by Mike Cooper. And they had a tremendous qualifying effort of 6.14 seconds and bettered that in round number one with a 6.08 from an alcohol dragster. Well, clearly, Bazzelli has got his hands full now as he works in the fire lane and his crew makes the last minute preparation. Barney's just been on a tremendous run. He won at uh, the Cajun Nationals in Baton Rouge. He won the Spring Nationals at Columbus. He's got a streak going as he comes to this second round. Well, I hope the amount of smoke that we saw coming out of that car in the other round that they put some pistons or something in it. That's right. Uh, it was pretty ominous looking. And off the mark first is Bill Barney. Boz Baby in the far lane trying to keep pace with him and darn near does. Oh, my. Barney, another terrific elapsed time of 6.09 at 224 miles an hour. The Montreal at the NHRA Grand National Sportsman Drag Races. I'm Steve Evans along with Gary Gerald, Big Daddy Don Garland. And we're starting second round of the alcohol bunny cars. You might as well start with one of the best. Frank Manzo has won, well, more races than any East Coast-based alcohol funny car in his career. Just a beautiful Thunderbird-bodied automobile. He'll be going up against Robert Elliott, and it's Elliott's in the far lane, completing his burnout at this time. Well, actually, both men getting a chance to heat the tires before they back into position and stage for this second-round run. Top alcohol funny car. Now, Don Garlitz, the burnouts are accomplished in what gear? High gear only, because if you burn out in one of the other transmission ratios, it could injure the transmission. And that's one thing about the alcohol funny cars. They are the most exciting cars to watch in a burnout. They make really nice, long, smoky burnouts. Very, very entertaining to the spectators. He's seven, so they have got some work cut out for them. Well, Manzo seems to be definitely the man to keep an eye on. He has been one of the strong competitors in this category. He is in the near lane. Getting set now to stage as he inches forward into position and on his left, Robert Elliott. And just like the directors, you'll hear tremendous RPM, maybe more so out of the funny cars because in some cases they're a bit heavier. The biggest motors in all of drag racing are starting to come to life. Elliott got away quickly, but here comes Manzo. Manzo on the move is going to win it, and he wins it easily in the near lane with a 6.06. Low elapsed time of the competition. Bird out. We're trying to see Gallon in the near lane. He has the lane choice. Cheeseman will be on the far side of the course. Cheeseman qualified seventh at 634. Gallon qualified tenth at 662. Notice how streamlined and beautiful these cars are. The latest state of the art in aerodynamics, these bunnies. Notice them working that throttle to keep that wheel spin just exactly right for that burnout. Well, that was Peter Gallon completing his burnout, and now Chuck Cheeseman will also have an opportunity to warm his tires. Now, if you're among those who just can't get enough information pertaining to the NHRA circuit that spans the North America continent, Steve Evans has a solution for you. You know, I am lucky enough to spend a lot of time in the pit area at NHRA national events, and I meet a lot of great fans and racers, for that matter, who have an insatiable appetite for information on their favorite sport. Now, if you're one of those and you can't get enough, even with television and National Dragster and the magazines, here is Dave McClellan to tell us about a new service that NHRA is offering. David, welcome. Steve, it is a new 900 phone number service. All you have to do is dial 1-900-468-NHRA. If you forgot what number goes with what letter, let me give you the numbers. 1-900-468-6472. Every day of every NHRA national event, that phone will be updated. The report will include a, an overall story about the day. Then you'll get individualized reports on top fuel, funny car, pro stock, sportsman racing, schedules, television schedules, you name it, you'll get it all. 
Is this like when I call um, some airlines and all I do is get a busy signal for about three hours? No, not quite. There's 3,000 incoming lines, and regardless of when you call, you'll always get the message starting at the front. So what you have the opportunity to do is every day of the national event, you can find out what's going on from the comfort and convenience of your home. At what price, Dave? costs a dollar and a quarter for the first minute, then 75 cents for every minute thereafter. And what better way can you find out about what's happening if it's all the way across the country? Doesn't matter. It'll be updated every day. You're going to have a whole bunch of new phone pals, Big Mac. I know. Uh, you're my number one phone pal. But either way, it's uh, a lot of fun and a great challenge to keep people up to date with what's happening. Thanks for the story. Thank you, Steve. An innovative touch incorporated by NHRA to keep you current on all the activities around the country. Right now, we're ready for this uh, pairing. Peter Gallon against Chuck Cheeseman. Cheeseman in the far lane. It's Gallon on the near side. Peter Gallon is one of only two bunny car drivers to ever get into the fives. We already saw Bob Newberry, the first to do so, out with problems in round number one. So the man to watch possibly is in the near lane. But the man away first was in the far lane, Chuck Cheeseman. Oh, Cheeseman gets very near the center line. May have left it off the throttle. Gallon, oh, he is tough. Frank was right. A 6-15 for against Chuck Cheeseman. We see Cheeseman get a starting line advantage right off. And you know he might have held on to that if it hadn't have got out of that groove right there. You see him get out of the flag. And of course that gave Gallon the chance to move ahead and ahead he did to almost a full car. Big Daddy Don Garlitz, I'm Gary Gerald. Delighted to have you along with us here for Sportsman Competition. Top alcohol funny car round number two from San Air Speedway just east of Montreal in Quebec, Canada. We're getting ready now for a matchup appearing between Ron Scott and Barry Payton. Certainly two of the prettiest cars in the entire San Air International Drag Strip. Ron Scott, that's a Beretta, 525 cubic inches. Over on the far side will be the Trans Am of Barry Payton. There you get a good look at it. Also 525 cubic inches. Ron Scott, he qualified sixth with a 632, while Barry Payton qualified ninth with a 656. Both cars getting ready to go now. And off the mark first is the far lane, Barry Payton. But Payton is all over the racetrack, and he decides he'd like to keep the shiny side up. The winner will be Scott at a 622, 220. Land Big Daddy. They bring the R's up, and it's Payton out first by a train land. But you'll notice a little smoke starts to come off of one of the tires. It throws the car hard to the left, then it darts back to the right, and Payton has his hands full, just keeping it under control and keeping it in his lane. And of course, that's Larry Dobbs. We continue second round action here in Alcohol Funny Car. Look at that set of injectors right there on the Cardiac Kids machine. That's Dobbs, Pontiac Trans Am. And Don, you'd think they could hardly be able to see around those injectors. They don't see very much around them, Gary. There used to be a small injector. They called it a bug catcher. Then it was a bird catcher. Now what you're looking at is a buzzard catcher. Let's check in now at the other end with Steve. Well, Ron Scott has certainly got the consistency. A 621 in round one, a 622 in round number two. Now, if it was just consistently a little quicker. A little quicker. We've got to pick it up a little bit. With an alcohol car, what can you do to pick it up? Drive the blower a little harder? What do you do? Drive the blower up a little bit. Loosen the clutch up a little bit so the motor can get up quicker. And How important do you think lane choice is here today on this racetrack? Everybody favoring uh, the right-hand lane or the near lane? I prefer the right-hand lane if I can get over there. Why? Just a better surface? Well, I've uh, I've run all the, uh, you know, first and second round in the right hand lane. You're familiar with it more than anything else. You're familiar with it, right. Okay, good job. Semi-final bound. So Scott will contemplate his next round in the semifinals, and we get set for the pairing between Edward Parker and Larry Dobbs. It is Dobbs on the near side, Parker on the far side. Parker's in an 87 for Renzo, and as we mentioned, Dobbs is driving a Pontiac Trans Am. And Don Garlett, you can always tell who has the heavier cars, because they run on a weight per cubic inch. These are the two biggest motors in the field. How about Parker at 543 cubic inches and Dobbs at 541? They've got the heavier cars and they want that kind of cubic inches to move them. Yeah, see, in this class, they don't have like a 500 cubic inch limit. It's how heavy is the car by the cubic inch. Oh, there's a problem at the start. It's going to be Ed Parker all the way in the yellow car. Dobbs apparently was not staged quite properly, maybe staged on the body instead of the front wheels. And as soon as he dropped the yards up, that red light was there. Ed Parker 